Hey there folks, Rezakaze here with uh, my final thoughts on Battlefield 3. This is the second to last mission, I believe, uh, for Battlefield 3 story. And, uh, well, like I said, I'm just here to give you my afterthoughts and what I thought about the game and everything else about it. Uh, I'm going to jump to the negative part first off uh as i said in the before thoughts the retelling of the story still irks me uh you really get a sense of what everything is about you know coming into the game here and this final scene kind of fits the rest of the story into place obviously if this is the last like real main mission before you go back to your character this falls I am like Lima or Dima Dima Lima whatever the fuck his name is you're like controlling his character and this final scene kind of sets the first spot that you had in the place it kind of sets everything down in motion and you just kind of sort of have that feel you know that everything's once again coming together but it's just with these kind of games, I can't get over the fact that I'm not like playing sort of live, so to speak. Uh, I kind of, I sort of explained it in the last video. Links in the description as well. I forgot to say it at the beginning of the video to uh, the before thoughts of the game. But it's the same, same concept that it's a, it's a story. You're following a storyline. It. It would me for me. It would feel like a big difference if this was like a live story, like jumping between, kind of like what Call of Duty does with the, with their missions. It really feels like it feels different than what the Battlefield campaign experience uh, gave to me. Um, not comparing them, but that's just sort of the experience. I don't like the retelling of it whatsoever. That really brought it down. The other negative I felt about the game, which uh, was which was quite different from you wouldn't understand the negative part unless you played the multiplayer, but the lack of health meter from the multiplayer really uh, kind of discerned me. I don't know what I was looking at, to be honest with you. I don't know why I was fucking looking up. I, I died. I completely forgot I died. I don't know why I was looking up. I think I might have been trying to pick something up or thinking I had something that I didn't have, some sort of under launch. I don't know. I don't know. But I know just about every kind of like shooting campaign game doesn't have a health meter. You know, your screen will turn red, uh, color will drain away. You know, that's the health meter. But Battlefield 3 is the first multiplayer game that I played in a while that has a sort of health meter in its multiplayer system that's, you know, specific to the number, not just, you know, the amount of red on your screen. I felt if they would have brought that, uh, ported that over from the multiplayer into the single player campaign, that that would have been just an incredible plus side to the game. Uh, it, it would have been great. They didn't do it. It's not like it affected too much, but that was a that was a pretty strong note because right here I would have liked to know how much exactly health I would have had. Because if I would have had, because you know looking at that screen, I thought I had like less than ten percent health. If I had like thirty or forty percent from that very same screen, I would have jumped out instead of you know taking it easy a little bit. But that's the big negative. Uh, the positive is uh, the ending of the game. Uh, the fight scene in Times Square. Uh, he's got his hands on the bomb, the, the trigger, just ready to go boom, and you stop it. That was amazing. Uh, one of probably the, I don't want to say the best, but a very, very good ending. A very strong, very strong ending. I would, I would definitely say uh, a top 10 ending of all the games I've ever played. I should do a list. Yeah. I think I should do a list of like my top gaming endings.
I think that would be a very good idea. What do you think? Oh, too bad. I'm going to do it anyway. Now I just need to actually create the list. Yeah, you'll see that video in like three months' time when there's like four other games that's supposed to be on the list that's not. Uh, okay. Uh, overall, it was a very good story. And I feel that many people uh, missed it because they'll only play the multiplayer. I'm trying to get in the car because I'm trying to figure out if I'm driving, passenger seat, riding bitch in the way back. I don't know. The game was very good. And as I said, I feel a lot of people missed it because these type of games, they don't play the campaign. They don't play the campaign. They just go straight for the multiplayer, straight for, you know, the co-op missions. They don't play the single player campaign. It's, it's an, not an integral part of the game. But that's why I still play it. That's why I play these games. They're they're amazing. They're great. Uh, the amount of work and concept and in-depth story that gets put into this makes it absolutely incredible. And I just really somewhat disappointed that people don't play this more. But overall, the game fell short because of... The difficulty. The difficulty was way too hard for what the game meant it out to be. If it was on normal, it sometimes felt like hard or even harder. It died way too many times for it being on normal. Uh, overall, the game, the game is definitely a buy. Considering on campaign mode, just only on campaign mode, it's worth a look. That's my thoughts, that's my talk, and I'll see you next week.